Hi, this is the James Engineering 1062-8 to burn wash system. It's our latest evolution of technologies packaged in one automatic lights out operatorless machine. All the operator needs to do is put the machine into cycle and it runs throughput from there. The system includes an eight station index table, seven tool stations, pick and place robot, conveyor in, conveyor out, input metering system, each tool station is mounted with a lubrication system. The lubrication system is pulse actuated. It has a 6 liter reservoir on it, good for about 200 hours of operation. Each tool station is equipped with a part ID system. The ID system is capable of sorting between two different parts or no part present at all. From there, we have a mist system on the roof of the system machine. The mist system collects up to the plant's collection system. We have door switches mounted on each door. Five doors, five door switches, each locking type, Euchner door switches. We use Siemens controls. This entire machine was built to specifications. This machine runs a snap ring part. We're deburring the snap ring land on a castellated part developed by three companies. Then after we engage a grinding wheel into the groove, we engage a brush to then radius the castellations. So we're doing two things with this machine. We're removing the burrs from the snap ring groove and then we're removing the sharp edges from the castellation machine. I'll take you for a walk around the machine. We're going to walk off to the operator's left. This is the loop pneumatic back pan. It's what we call the pneumatic back pan. We put all of our pneumatics onto this system. We're using pneumatic valves. Everything's Profi bus connected. Once again, everything was built to specification. Continuing to walk to the operator's left. Here you can see that we've mounted a wash hose. It's external from the machine. Dragging it through the machine is not a very wise idea. There's too many proxies inside to break. The wash hose is about 30 foot long. It's good to reach out and around the machine anywhere you need to go. You can drag it in through each of the five doors. Here is the quality check conveyor. When the machine signaled to issue a quality check part, it comes out through this gravity conveyor here. This is our input coolant system. This machine was designed to hook up to GM's coolant system. So what we do is we have the fluid come in through an inlet right there. Then we regulate it down through and we pump it back out after collecting it into the belly of the machine through this pipe going back up to the filtration system. From there, parts come out the exit conveyor. This machine was fitted with extra exit conveyors. What you're looking at here is an output meter system. So while sharing with the main conveyor, 
we get a signal when to release parts onto the main conveyor then we let then we tell the meter to go ahead and let a part go and it lets it into a gap By activating the unlocked door switches, I can allow access into the system. When we unlock the door switches, the red indicator light comes on, changes from green. We have big wide access. Each of the tools are accessible from each of the doors. You can make your adjustments through these doors. You've got good access. It's all protected by locking door switches. We have gravity protection. So there's air trapping valves so that the tools cannot fall down under the operator. We have locking devices. We've tagged everything with lockout tags and procedures. All of our hoses and, and, and sensors are labeled. We have a balancing valve for the system flush so we can balance the flow between both sides. Once I shut the door, the system will lock itself again, only to unlock itself by the control panel. You can see the extent we've gone to labeling the machine. Everything is labeled. I.O. addresses, working pressures, color coding the piping to Start walking you around to the operator's right of the machine. We built our own gantry system. It's a pneumatically controlled system. We have part ID process here so that we know the part that we've picked up. The system traverses back and forth along these rails. We've got everything guard locked again. I've got a cheater in here at the moment. Gantry comes across, picks a part up off the main conveyor, and drops it down onto our conveyor. We have flags that tell when a part's been dropped. We have sensors that tell that the trucks released the part. We can then track the part all the way into the system. We guard everything. Per specifications, you cannot get your hands in anywhere you shouldn't be able to get them into. We've got labeling and tags on everything. We note motor rotations, input numbers, output numbers. Walking around further to the back of the machine, you can see the brain in a machine. All the sensors come to a central Profi bus bus system. We don't have multiple inputs, they all come to one place.
Got good visibility with the windows. Open up the front of the system. Activate the unlock signal. Indicator lights turn red. You can unlock the system. Unrestricted access. No center post. Operator can reach anywhere he needs to. Easy to reach in, make adjustments. You can see the wash system mounted on the roof. Flow nozzles at each outlet. I'll go ahead and put the machine into dry cycle. In dry cycle we don't actually cycle parts. In dry cycle the machine will just run without parts. There's our main diagnostic screen. Gives the status of everything in real time.
On this particular machine, we have two output conveyors. On the next version of this machine, we'll have output sorting, which isn't shown here. With the output sorting, we use the same two conveyor arrangement. Because we know what part is on station number seven, this brush here, we know which part the robot picks up from station seven. We have an arm located on the output conveyors that then can sort it between one conveyor or another. This machine has the ability to run truly random parts. This machine, again, is set up for two different parts. We can have machines set up for up to six different parts. We can sort them accordingly. We can take them in truly random. This machine is set up to have long life. So we duplicate the setup between stations one and four. When the tool wears out on station one, a proxy indicates that it's worn out. We put the machine into sequence mode, which means when tool one wears out, it stops after its cycle. Tool two resumes without the machine ever going down. When tool two wears out, it stops after its cycle. Tool three picks up. Again, that repeats, changes to tool four. We have four disks on there. We have another special disk. Then we have two brushes. The two brushes also do sequence. What this games is that you can run a whole shift without ever changing grinding wheels. This is ideal for someone who's looking to have a truly long running machine without much operator input. You can see here how we have a diverter plate there. You can see the QC arm engaged. The QC arm wipes the part right onto the conveyor. Right there. It's a gravity conveyor. Then the part comes and slides out the machine. Right there where the operator can pick it up. We have air knives here to dry off the part. We don't run them in dry cycle for air conservation, but during the cycle the part will, the robot knows when it drops off the part, it'll engage the air. We use a timer to shut the air off. I've removed the guarding on this machine so that we can see it. Here's our output metering system. We have a flag here that tells us if, if the part is present, and if it is, then it knows to go ahead and look for a space. Here's our gantry system. Part will travel underneath, hit a flag again. I have the safety guarding removed. From there it travels through the system, back into the machine.
This is the 1062-8 DeBurr system. I hope you like what you see, and I hope to be talking to you soon.